linked him to the crime. The police never produced a murder weapon. And as you know, seven out of nine state witnesses have recanted or changed their testimony in sworn affidavits, some citing police coercion. But what's even more disturbing, terribly disturbing, is the unwillingness of the courts to admit that mistakes occur. Throughout the years of appeals, Troy Davis has repeatedly been denied the opportunity to have evidence of his innocence heard. Have the courts stated that his claims are false? No. Any doubts about the new witness statements could easily be examined in a new hearing. But officials have been unwilling to take even this first step. Time and time again, they have fallen back on technicalities and on a myriad of excuses to refuse Troy a new day in court. It seems to, as if they're to them, Davis's very ex existence is simply an inconvenience, that his life can be brushed aside at the merest excuse, wrapped in the guise of standard operating procedure. Beyond reasonable doubt, beyond reasonable doubt, the heart of our justice system has been little more than an illusion for the Davis family. It's been a fleeting ideal that apparently exists only for the lucky few. This was patently clear with the Georgia Supreme Court's narrow four to three decision, which all but ensured that Troy Davis would never get a thorough fair hearing. This is not because the court thoroughly researched what was presented to them, but because a superficial review of the case discredited the value of the recanted witness testimonies. That was reasoning the Chief Justice, the Chief Justice of the court, Leah Sears said in her dissent, quote, defied all logic and morality. Yeah. Defied all logic and morality. Yeah. This is simply unconscionable. It's unconscionable because the entire case against Troy Davis relies on eyewitness testimony. And we know there have been countless real life stories that have proven that such testimony is by its very nature highly fallible. And the problems are not limited to Georgia. Soon you're going to hear from Jennifer Thompson Canino of Maryland, whose misidentification of her attacker led to the imprisonment of the wrong man for her rape. Nor is Troy Davis the first person who has suffered as a result of unreliable and unscrupulous police informants. And tonight, you're gonna to hear from Suja Graham, who spent five years on San Quentin's infamous death row after being framed for a murder that he did not commit. And sadly, Troy is also not the first death row inmate to suffer when Chatham County officials decide to disregard new evidence and dig in their heels. In fact, two men convicted of murder in the Chatham County have already been exonerated following ex 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 egregious cases of prosecutorial misconduct. The Chatham County District Attorney and Superior Court have shown remarkable gall throughout this case. They could have pushed for an examination of the new evidence in Davis's case. What have they done instead? They have pushed for an execution to occur before the U.S. Supreme Court returns next week and consider Davis's final appeal. That's what they've done. Yeah, it is shame. And the state of Georgia as a whole is turning a deaf ear to the cries for improvements to the criminal justice system that would help prevent future mistakes and offer more accuracy and fairness. The legislature failed to get a bill to the floor that would improve eyewitness identification, despite the fact that that bill had support from the Georgia Chiefs of Police. And they've made drastic cuts to indigen indigenous defense funding that would provide adequate legal representation to the majority of those who are sent to death row. And let's remember this. When the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles granted Troy Davis's stay of execution last year, it wrote that its members, quote, will not allow an execution to proceed in this state unless and until its members are convinced that there is no doubt as to the guilt of the accused. That's what they said. That's right. yeah. They will not allow an execution unless there is no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. It's indeed a sign of hope 
that some authorities do consider the possibility of innocence in cases dealing with life or death. We appreciate